Maybe this is the beehive design. Work, huh? Yeah. Is that print? How is that? Uh, is it printed on there? Um, this is a drawing that is a pen and ink drawing on paper. Uh -huh. And then we took a digital scan of it and we work with a company that specializes on printing and recycled soda bottle fabric. Um, so, it's, uh, so that's what the fabric what is. The fabric is. Huh? It's basically a giant jetting, jetting printer. Um, wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, because you don't see many things just printed out with that kind of detail, you know. I mean, a big billboard doesn't have to have that kind of resolution, you know. Just to scan that. Though, it's quite a piece of art. Yeah. So you're part of the collective. I am. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're both artists and activists who work together. And we make um, these collaborative narrative images. That we use as educational and storytelling tools. Oh, okay. Um, so we've got a few different pieces here. Um, like this one. But this one that we're looking at is one that we just made about mountaintop removal coal mining in Appalachia. Oh, wow. Uh, and, uh, yeah, really bad thing. The, the theme that is underlying a lot of the posters that we, that we make is looking at how um, like a global, this global capitalist system is really impacting the environment and communities. So yeah. Even though it's like, why are you here talking about mountaintop removal at this Occupy Wall Street? Because if you look at the we trace the top part of this poster, we're looking at the growth of corporate power from, right. the, from the Industrial Revolution onwards, and just looking at it specifically through the coal industry, and seeing how it's gained so much power and eroded labor rights, and like, then all the things that people are talking about here, just specifically through the lens of coal. And we're, you know, we're like tracing the birth of the Industrial Revolution, the replacement, like, birth of machines that started doing human labor work. We trace it through the, like, um, horrible working conditions that were first imposed on people during that corp like that company town model. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to talk about what were corporations all about, right? When they first got started, it was pretty clear, you know, we didn't pay people. Like if you worked in the coal mines of Kentucky, you didn't even get paid in the United States dollars, you got paid in script. And you couldn't afford you couldn't spend it anywhere else other than the company store and oh, yeah. set the good the price on all the goods. Um, and people rebelled against that. So the whole bottom part of chapter two is looking at the labor movement that grew out of a re in response to those oppression working conditions that corporations and robber barons were putting on folks. Yeah. And we saw this amazing victory of, you know, the workers, people just like you and me rising up and like claiming the right to have an eight hour, eight hour work day, the right to get health care, all these basic things that we now kind of take for granted but are under attack again. Yeah. And if you follow it through, we get into chapter three where we're seeing the present day situation. You know, specifically with coal mining, we're looking at even more huge industrial destruction. Walmart, and big, jobs. big retail. Yeah, and we're seeing, like, as people are losing their coal mining jobs, what they're being offered are things like working at the Walmart for minimum wage. You know, these things that yeah. are equal exchanges. And they're also con showing a corporate power system up at the top that's kind of controlling the means of production and um, also limiting the way we, the people, can interface with this system and how we can change it. Tell yeah. us that all we can do is go to the mall and tell <laughs> all the same shit except they put a green leaf on it. Yeah. Tell us that's all we can do to create change. Yeah. That negates the fact that, yeah, you know, like consumer changes are important, but we also have a political voice and that we, like, have power to leverage more than just what we buy. And when we look up in chapter four, we see the, coll the collusion between um, the bank yeah. And, and the government building. And yeah. There's like a revolving door between the two of them about how, you know, these big corporations, the big banks, the big funders, like control a lot of the decision making that goes on in our country. But all beneath it, in chapter four, is looking at the resurgence of the resistance that was in chapter two. And we see all these different ways people 
are organizing in their communities or speaking out, from like organizing marches and occupations like this to community meetings where they're brain solving, brain problem solving and brainstorming yep. what they need to do. Yeah. They're signing a petition here for Coalfield Citizens' Rights. They have a millipede up there who's doing all the hard legal research to understand oh, yeah. the different things they need to do to get hearing requests and deny permits. They're even what, like what's shutting SMCRA? down the city. Um, that is SMACRA, the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act, oh. which was written in the 1970s to uh, regulate coal mining. Yeah, uh, which it doesn't do. Which okay. it doesn't do. Which it yeah. doesn't do. Right. Yeah. Um, it was it was written to legalize. Yeah, strip mining. Strip mining. Basically. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. Sure. Wow. But then when you move yeah. into Chapter Five, you see. Um, if this is what everybody's fighting against, this is how people are fighting, this is what people are trying to create instead. Um, you know, it's not utopia, it's the present day. This yeah. is what people in the Appalachian Mountains and abroad, or like away from there, are doing to kind of counteract that system of, that we're displaying in Chapter 3. Yeah. You're seeing everything from folks working together to heal the watersheds that have been polluted. Yeah. People who are doing intergenerational knowledge sharing to remember. Um, a different way of living. You know, it's easy to think that this is the only way that humans have ever done things. So right. Like how, what, you can never right. change this. And this is this is all new. This is the new thing. And we have a lot of like shared human history that we can draw on to create and recreate and relearn new um, new systems. So they're doing different ways of um, having economies like community kitchens, the reclaiming the destroyed land from mountaintop removal sites and turning it into a productive ecosystem again. Yeah. Up at yeah. the top, there's a wasp nest that's talking about how, what folks from cities can do. Um, you know, uh -huh. we don't think that everyone is just going to abandon the cities. Like we have to figure out what folks in New right. York do. You know, how do we? Turn what New what York can you do that's productive yeah. and uh, safe, clean, and yeah. Yeah. So this is everyone kind this of finding out. This is fabulous. What a fabulous finding. piece of work. Yeah, and we have and a, more than one person did this. How many people worked um, on this? This one had 10 different people in the production team. Wow. From research, illustration, design, and layout. Um, wow. And then we have like 25 people who are trained in knowing how to present and do the storytelling. And we travel with copies. You're one of those or are you an artist? Well, you're um, probably an artist as well. Uh, yeah, we all have multiple hats. That we wear. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and that, we came down to Occupy Wall Street. I um, wanted to hear what people had to say. Felt like our work was in the same vein of tracing. Absolutely. You know, that how all it's, uh, it's a deep core of what is the problem with capitalism in the first place. You know, the whole concept of making a profit over top of an exchange is an idea that's like it's now gone to the point where we're we're shocked at how different the the buyer and the seller can be, you might say. Yeah. And I think one thing that we're, we try to show in this poster is this like linear system that capitalism imposes on a world that is actually cyclical. You know, like yeah. you look at an environment, you know, read the way resources are replenished in the world. It's this really beautiful cyclical system. You know, like we want to think of like how do we invent a system that doesn't have waste and recycles and it's like it already exists in the world. You don't have to invent like it, yeah. Imposing this linear system, like we, we have it illustrated pretty clearly here with the coal mining, where we're taking like live living mountains and destroying them and turning them into a huge industrial powerhouse up here that's creating a bunch of consumer goods that just end up in a mountain of trash, you know? It's like, and you can't recycle e waste, you know? Like, you recycle it by sending it to Africa where kids with rocks break out the like, computer chips and harvest the metal, but like, yeah. That's not like we're creating piles of toxic waste that are going to take millions of years to like be reabsorbed. Yeah. So trying to counteract that linear system that like a capitalist economy is putting on the world is like what a lot of the communities that we talk to and people who are trying to reinvent new things are kind of counteract that and regrow something and reconnect with the deeper history we have. Yeah. 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 Is it um, possible that you guys could ever put this on the web with a narrative over it? Oh, we do. You oh, do? Yeah. And we're working on it. At the moment, we're working on putting together like a clickable, interactive version of it. Oh, cool. We have these paper posters available, but it's also, all of our work is anti-copyright. 
Um, yeah. We actually um, want people to make copies of this and reproduce it. Get it out there. Get, get the word the out, right? Get so the images yeah, out, even. Get the images out. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. If you want to use any of this on your flyers or newspapers or books or whatever, put it on a mural. You yeah. Totally That's into neat. It. And you know, and it, anyone who is given that opportunity will gladly thank and reference the people that they used it from because it's only right to say, thank you, you let me use this part. And I mean, we've never, we, I mean, we've been just operating courtesy. for 10 years under an anti have you really? label. And, I mean, awesome. we found it's the opposite, you know, like, we don't have to protect it. Like, the more we give, the more generosity is given back yeah, to us. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We want people to use it, so it's all downloadable on our website. You know, people can also get... And did I get that on this little flyer here? Yeah, yeah. All of our okay. contact information is on the posters and on all of our Instagram I'm working on a, a project. I, I'm out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh, really? And I'm working on a project that has to do with perma design. And we're using satellite imagery to actually go down right to an individual's house and, and get the um, uh, USGS and um, some other uh, organizational information about your property, which way the wind's blowing, how much uh, rainfall you get, what season, um, the soil type, all that, so that you can, and it's all done through the internet, that you get a design for your backyard to make the water that comes off your roof and your gray water into a useful product meaning growing food as well as flowers and whatever, you know, bees, all that kind of thing. And there's a big urban component to that. So when you say, what could you do in New York? You know, there's lots of surface area here that could be productive. utilized. Yeah, that could be productive. Yeah. And one of the things is folks doing rooftop gardening up in the... Yeah, the yeah, rooftop gardening. Yeah, yeah. So the guy I'm working... Uh, for and with promoting the company is um, is w he'll be out there. It's called Perma Design, okay. and um, uh, the website's not quite up yet. But if you can remember Perma Design, I'll you'll find it in about a month. I, actually, I my my hometown is Colorado, and I yeah. I go touring out there with these graphic stuff. Yeah, so I, I well, we're out of Santa Fe. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, very cool. Thank you, you for your time and your, your uh, narrative because it's really yeah, wonderful. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.